Welcome to Banks Power's Race Shop in North Engineering, and this is our Ram Air intake for the 2017 through 19 Ford Super Duty, powered by the 6.7 liter Power Stroke. This intake not only beat the competition in the lab on our flow bench, but also on the road where we do our real world density tests, where we measure temperature and pressure directly down to the compressor inlet itself. With reduced pressure loss and lower temperature, that means greater air density, greater efficiency, and more power. You can install this intake at home in about 45 minutes with nothing more than simple hand tools. But before we go into this intake, we got to see what's going on inside your factory air box. You'll notice it's got this weird looking duct right here. That's because the battery is normally located in front of the air box. The factory designed a scoop that goes under the battery tray and reconnects to a scoop right where the front grill is. And that grill actually has a duct that pulls air from the front of the car over the radiator, down the scoop, and into this air box. Now, while it only has one entry point for air, which is great for getting nothing but cold, fresh air from the front, it does limit how much airflow can enter this unit. Anytime you're not gaining density, you're losing density. So first now, let's take a look inside the box and see what's going on with this filter. You can see the filter only gets air from the bottom half of the whole air box. Problem with that is, all these pleats are the first to get completely covered with dirt, which then means the air has to find another way around. And there's not a lot of space inside this air box. This whole air box is nothing but a density killer. It's not adding performance at all. And it gets even worse. Look what's going on inside their top lid. They aren't even using the entire surface area and you have a grid right here in the middle. This grid is doing nothing but adding more drag and resistance to your intake. Now, there's also factory bellows to worry about. These factory bellows are important because they do allow for engine movement as your engine is vibrating. However, as air runs through factory corrugated bellows like this, there's so much extra drag and resistance. Effectively, the cross section inside here is smaller than the pipe itself. You lose flow every time you run air through regular corrugated bellows. Our Banks bellows are completely different, and we'll talk about that later in the video. You also have some rather harsh bends in the factory design where it narrows and tries to make that oval shape for your turbo inlet. So there's a lot of performance on the table you could add between the filter, their lid, and their front duct. So with that, let's see how the Banks Ram Air is completely different. Now this was our latest design for this air box. When we were doing initial prototypes, we actually tried some designs that reached over the battery. That actually flowed less, and that's why we went with this design where we reach underneath. The whole box is made from cross-link polyethylene, so it's stronger and more durable than the injection molded plastic your factory unit has, and it doesn't need to have any of the extra ugly looking strengthening ribs on the outside or inside, which means the entire air box can be completely smooth for enhanced airflow and performance. So we still utilize the original front duct, which we connect to a scoop to where your grill is, but we also add a second air inlet underneath pull air from underneath the vehicle. And because we're not reaching over or moving anything in the engine bay, that means your battery can go exactly right back where it's supposed to. There's no extra brackets to worry about. It's just like the factory designed it. Now our big ass filter is the biggest and freest flowing filter on the market. It has more surface area than AFE and SMB. And that's because we custom tailor each of these filters. We go as far as they know how big our pleats are, how deep they are, the media itself, and even the wire mesh on the outside. We custom design these filters for our Ram Air intakes, which allows it to be between 39 and 56% less restrictive. And it's huge all brown opening is so large, it's literally three times the size of SNB's filter outlet. SNB's filter, both in their pleat count, their surface area, and their outlet, is way too small for the power demands of the Ford Power Stroke. Now our big ass filter specifically angles down inside the airbox. That way, if any dirt or debris does make its way into the pleats, it has a higher chance of actually falling out, and not getting collected inside. Next, let's see how our lid meets up with this filter. Now our top lid portion mates perfectly with this upper seal, this upper collar on our big ass filter. It slides over and that way it smooths out the airflow from the filter down into the turbo. This whole upper box has a smooth organic shape to reduce drag and resistance. 
There's no resistance and drag here, and air can go right in through your turbo. Now our elbows are made from EPDM, which is a style of synthetic rubber and not silicone. And there's a couple of reasons for that. EPDM is a lot more rigid than silicone. While still flexible, it won't collapse under the vacuum of your turbo. And it's also more resistant against cuts and abrasions and other kind of damage that might happen inside your engine bay. It's also resistant against heat, cold, moisture, and all the elements. Now our bank's elbows do incorporate billows similar to factory, but unlike factory, our billows slide over our intake tube and lock into place like that. That means as air is entering and running through our tube, it's actually running under the bellows before it gets into the turbo compressor. The air running through this tube has no idea these bellows even exist. And we even have a coolant rest right here for your factory coolant hoses. So how do we do? On the flow bench, our intake was able to hit 59 and a quarter pounds per minute math at 15 inches of water. That's 49% more than stock, we still beat SNB, and our gains were three and a half times the gains that AFE could do with their intake. Now, while these gains on the flow bench were impressive, our mechanical engineering department were not satisfied yet. So it was time to take this intake and our competition out of the lab and on the road where we did real road density testing, where we actually put sensors in the front, in the air box, and down by the compressor to really see how their intakes perform when the real world's out there with heat and driving conditions. So here we have AFE's air box assembly. Now their air box actually reuses the factory bottom duct. There's a problem with this already. This opening and this duct do not meet perfectly. There is a gap around it, which means as air is coming in, you're losing pressure and you're losing flow. Now this is AFE's solution to the air box problem. What they wanted to do was try to reach for cold air that's in front of the battery. So if you want, they'll sell you an optional extra. They'll try to sell you this scoop. And this scoop is actually reaching over the battery while still utilizing the factory duct underneath. But if you think about it, all they're doing is splitting the original airflow. There really is not much more air entering this system. This gap is very narrow, both on this side and over here on this side. So while their intake design was really trying to get cold air from the front, by limiting how much air can enter their system, they actually had the most drag out of all of our intakes tested minus factory. They came in last. So let's get AFE out of the way. So this is S&B and they went with an opposite approach. Instead of reaching forward to grab cold air, they moved the entire battery and airbox assembly around. That's a dangerous idea. For one, this whole intake is really heavy. This giant piece of angle iron you're supporting a 50 pound battery on a bracket that's on your intake that's now hanging off a piece of metal. This is not good and this is not safe. Imagine you're driving on the freeway, you hit a bump, you hit a pothole, or if you're driving your truck off road on a dirt road, every single time you hit that bump, you're trying to jam this battery out of this tray and off this intake. There's no way this intake can support a 50 pound battery cantor levered on a bracket where it's not supposed to be and it gets even worse when you relocate the battery. Since the battery used to be here, and now it's over here, their kit actually includes heat shrink and extra wires because you have to extend the battery cables just to do this modification. But surely it was worth it, right? Putting that air box towards the front got a lot of cold air. Unfortunately, that was not the case. When we ran our test on this intake, we had sensors for pressure and temperature located in the front, located on the side here where their fender inlet is, as well as these two rear vents. Now, when we did our density testing on this intake, we were measuring for temperature and pressure at the inlet, as well as the fender inlets, the back inlets, and down by the compressor to really see how the pressure and temperature changed through the whole intake track. The first test we did with this, we drove it with the box open. SNB includes this plug or by opening it up for more airflow. The problem is when you seal it with this plug, this plug acted as a one-way mirror, letting more heat into the box and raising the internal temperature. This intake 
is not a cold air intake. This intake is a hair dryer. So how did the Banks Ram Air do in our real world density tests? We already knew we had the lowest restriction on our flow bench, but once heat's involved in the real world, everything can change. Compared to factory, when we had our sensor set up in the front, in the air box, and down by the compressor, our Banks Ram Air was half as restrictive as factory. And it was also able to lower intake temps, not just in the front, but actually measured down by the compressor itself. If you have less resistance in your intake with a colder charge coming in, that means more density and higher mass airflow where you need it. And just to make sure we weren't missing anything, our engineers modified one of those prototypes with a large inlet here on the side where the passenger fender was. They were trying to see if there was more cold air back here. Unfortunately, this portion was actually receiving 125 degree air, which is why we've sealed it off. So what does this mean? Our ram air intake was the freest flowing intake with the greatest mass airflow at the lowest pressure drop and the lowest intake air temperatures. So what does this mean for a stock vehicle? You're gonna have improved throttle response and a more efficient engine because you're breathing cool and dry air. That's really important for power consistency, especially if you're towing or going up a grade where you're constantly on the throttle. You do not want an intake that's going to heat up over time due to high intake temps, resulting in high exhaust temps, resulting in reduced power. Power consistency is what you're looking for, and the Banks Ram Air delivers on that. And obviously with a tune truck, when you add more fuel, your gains can be even more substantial. So, get your Banks Ram Air today.